Every praise, every praise, so sing hallelujah, go we hallelujah in the highest. Every praise. Now we got on the other instrument play for us as we dance. We're gonna dance in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. There are pleasures forevermore. Can you give the Lord a shout? Yes, 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 everybody say, Now we're gonna do something. What I do, you do it. Are you getting me? God, my God, my yes, he is. Say, hey. Every praise is to our God. Yes. Everybody come on and say. Yes, okay. And say. Take a look up and say. Everybody. Come on and say Everybody say That's okay and say Worship is to our God. He's our deliverer. He's our savior. Please take your seats and put your hands together for the King of Kings. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are happy to be in the house today? God is faithful. Praise the Lord. 
Let's listen to today's devotional. change your life with God's word. It is our prayer that this day-to-day -day devotional by Ben and Kay Ahiga Jr. will do just that. June 22nd, be joyful. Bible verse to ponder upon. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22, New King James Version. As you wrestle with the challenges of everyday life, you can simply forget to count your blessings and rejoice. We tend to see more of what is not yet working well than what God has fixed for us. Complaints and murmurings are more common to find than hearts filled with gratitude for what God has done. If you are guilty of this and you truly desire happiness, abundance and contentment in spite of what you are going through in life, there are a few things that will guarantee you with joy. 1. Love God with all your heart and love His Son Jesus Christ. Two. Depend on Him for your strength. And three, obey His word and strive to follow His will. Joy is God's basic character and it is God's desire for you. With God's help, you can become a really joyful person. But you must take responsibility for your joy. Joy has nothing to do with your circumstances. Joy is a choice, an attitude that comes from having confidence in God. True happiness and contentment cannot come from the things of this world. Understand that every day can and it's a cause of celebration if you can only worry less and trust God more. There are people around you who have decided to reject joy and they don't want joy and they don't want you to be joyful either. If you give them the chance, they will suck your joy out of you. Watch out for them and don't hang around them. Discipline your mind to view life from a right perspective because certain kinds of thinking will lead you into joy and certain kinds of thinking will defeat your joy. Don't wait until it's all perfect before you begin to express joy. Today is the day God made. There is no better time to be joyful than now. I want to urge you to make a choice to rejoice always in spite of what is going on around you because it is God's will for you to always be joyful. Let us pray and repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, help me not to let the happiness around me determine my state of life but to draw joy from your spirit you planted in me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Bible reading plan for today is 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 1 to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 17, Acts chapter 4, verse 8 to 28, Psalms 140, verse 1 to 13, and Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. The Lord bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Something I like that was said here is that our circumstances do, does not determine our joy. So no matter what you're going through, like Papa will always say, when the devil tells you a lie, just laugh at it. Because the devil cannot do any other thing than try to steal your joy. So I'm just going to give us two strong reasons why our joy should not cease. Now in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. In firm foundation, we host the presence of God constantly. And the fruit of the Spirit is joy. So once you have the fruit of the Spirit inside of you, you cannot produce anything other than joy. That's the first reason. The second reason is that today is my birthday. So you must celebrate me. So stand up with me as we take this song together. Enjoy and then we give praise to God. Hallelujah. There is joy, joy, joy in the presence of the Lord. Sing it. Hallelujah. Amen. There is joy.
Now you tell our music director how we play. Mm-hmm. Look at somebody say, be joyful. Are you happy to be in church? Are you sure? Hallelujah. Can you meet about five places and just welcome them to church? Give them a hug. Or you go and meet 20 persons. Jesus name. You may be seated. God bless you. You see, I like when children pray. Because children pray. They pray their sometimes you can say it's a foolish prayer. We play, we pray intelligently. That's why we don't see results. <laughs> I want to impress God with our prayer. And God really knows what you want. Just say, say it. Instead of your leg is burning, you say your eye is burning you. Because, and so, I just don't, you see, two weeks ago when we were praying, God told us, we just heard that Boko Haram is a distraction. It's not what will destroy Nigeria. So we declared it and said, well, let's just pray for Nigeria. We prayed, and that week, we actually saw peace return back to our state. Wherefore, we are declaring war. And last week, and now, this week that just come, that passed, and now knew why God said that was it. The real thing that will destroy our nation is the words we speak over this nation. And the words we speak over ourselves. We are very rude. We don't, we don't talk well of people. When the people are raining, we clap for them. When they make one mistake, we say crucify them. The super egos made one, broke a record. The first team in the World Cup to have a goal, let's draw. But you put them in hospital with dream. You even called for the resignation of our coach. Because they didn't win him. He had one point. And Spain did not have. Nobody co- when they even scored yesterday, you didn't even shout. Because you know why? 
don't believe in them. We don't even believe in our nation. When you say something happened, you say, not today. Americans wake up and say, God bless America. Somebody woke up in this country and said, Nigeria, Jaga, Jaga, we started singing it. You shall have whatsoever. For me, Nigeria will win the World Cup. I don't know about you. Some of you are saying, Amen. No. But I don't know about you. But for me, they will bring back our cup. I know you don't believe. <laughs> and you who, are the, you who are Christian, you speak in tongues even more than me. When you are praying like this, me myself, I will be catching cold. But it's not what you pray, it's what you speak. Because what you pray, you might even be praying fear. It's what you do after you have prayed. Our scripture for this series is Genesis 1, 28 to 30. I'll just take a word, say, and God bless them. The first word that God spoke to man when he saw him was, he blessed them. The blessing means empower to prosper. It didn't cost them. Please, I want you to laugh at this lie. A cost is more powerful than a blessing. Laugh at the lie, laugh at that lie. My Bible made me that I know that a cost will go to the third and the fourth generation. But the blessing will go to a thousand generations. Start having the thing that God wants you to have. How many of you you want your situation to change? Stand up on your feet. On your situation, this situation you are in now is very bad. You want it to change? Almost everybody wants their situation to change. Is that true? Huh? Eh? You are in the right place. Sit down. The situation will change. Shout it one more time. The one with the ladder say, May take the blessing. You want to take your brother's blessing? Is that not covetousness? <laughs> In Numbers chapter 13 and verse 27 to 30, the word of God says, they gave Moses this account. We went into the land for which you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey. Here is his food. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. And in verse 31 to 33, it says, But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Did they fight with them? How did they know that they are stronger? Small body, not be sickness. And they spread. <laughs> you see, sometimes. And they spread. You know, you know, light spreads faster. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they have explored. They said, the land we explored divorced those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The Nephilim are the descendants of Anna come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we look the same to them. Question, did they ask the people whether they look like grasshoppers? What you believe about yourself is what you will experience. 
and it's what you think. There are some of you that you just believe that when you go to a place, people will be looking at you and laughing at you. Not that they have after laughed. It's what you believe. And so today I want to talk about a message I've titled Experiencing Your Beliefs. Your beliefs is what you will always experience. As long as you believe that you are under satanic attack, you will get it. Every area of your life that is not being with hope reveals that you are believing a lie. And that area of your life is a stronghold of the devil. If you don't have hope about your future, you are believing a lie. If you don't have hope about your finances, your, the raising of your children, you are believing a lie. And that place is a stronghold. Your spirit and your soul is the autopilot of your life. As long as you, listen, that's why I tell, told somebody, I was talking to a commissioner, he didn't believe me. And so I left him, because it's according to your faith. I can't argue you to the kingdom. The kingdom is by revelation. I told him, I said, poverty is not an economic problem. He said, never. I said, it's your economic problem. I said, okay. Poverty is a soulish and a spiritual problem. When I mean spiritual, it's not the way you say spiritual. Because if I say spiritual now, you'll be thinking of one babala or one, one attack. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. You have your spirit, you have your soul. If your spirit and your soul are not in sync, or your spirit and your soul are not properly, are not prospering, a new set of belief system. A new set of beliefs. And God, and you know what? God wants to give it to us. He's a good God. And so you know what? We need to develop a lifestyle of repentance. Repentance is not an event. It's called repent. Repent. Re, go back. Pent, the penthouse. Go back and see things the way God sees things. And as long as your perspective is not changing, you always believe in satanic attack. Any bad thing that happens to you is Satan. Satan, Satan. I was there one day in Port in my friend's meeting, and they said, give testimony. A woman came out. She says, see, I was doing, says, Satan came. Satan kicked me like this, kicked me like this. Satan. You know what we believe in church? God is good though, but devil fear that guy. True of us. Uh -huh. So when you go and tell a pastor that pastor pray for me, I'm under you say God bless you. Say, sir. When you for use of Bombay prayer, say jack the thing. Uh, uh, because you actually believe in the in the activity of prayer that the God that answers prayer. The word of God we have read has not taken root in our life. We believe that this that your life will advance by good conduct. We actually believe that if you if you if you if you give tithe, and I'm not saying it's not good. If you give your offering, I'm not saying that's not, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, if you give, um, if you come to church Sunday, Wednesday, live group, super Christian. If you, if you do all this, you actually believe that God will now reward you. Which is a truth, but it's a lower truth compared to what I want to... Who has a baby here? A mother and a baby, can you come? You have a baby that you're carrying. You have to remove the baby from Oja. African mothers. I don't know why you keep baby at the back. Your eyes are not there. Or you put the baby at the back. But that's what our mother, she has a twin. She just gave birth to a set of twins. What's his name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. The God with us, you see now. Do you love this book guy? Why? Because he's a blessing from God. 
blessing from God. Okay. Does it fetch water for you? No, not yet. No, you see? Wait, oh. Does this baby poo poo on you? Yes. Does he wee wee? Yes, sir. Does he wake up when not supposed to wake up? Yes. <laughs> so really, this child is a problem, small, small. No. So you like the problem? Did the baby ask you for shirt? No. Why did you put shirt? I have to put. You have to put. Why? Why trouser and shoe? <laughs> he asked. Me. You see, let me tell you. You see. I'm not supposed to perform for God to love me. He loves me. He's going to give me the kingdom even if I don't do anything. It's a higher truth. You know why I give tithes? Do you know why I pray? Do you know I read my Bible? It's what lovers do. He loves me. This baby inconveniences her. He loves me. Call this baby. Look at the baby when he sleeps. He does, he does, this baby does nothing for her. Nothing. Nothing, not yet, because that's the thinking. You are raising him to do something for you. That that's what that's how a human being thinks. But God does not think like that. God created you. What did Adam do for God to give him the garden of Eden? Nothing. Go back to this. God bless you. Thank you. And that's why many of you always say I'm not worthy. If that baby wakes up, the mother must wake up. If the baby does not sleep, the mother's eyes is still awake. He said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. You are the apple of his eyes. Neither sleep nor slumber. Many of you believe in satanic attack instead of Jesus protect. We are in for a ride today. Whatever you believe is going to come to you. When I share testimony, that the time I got testimony, I didn't share testimony. I, I knew I lo lost only 20% of the testimony. But the day I shared it, all of them, be it unto you. Yeah. So you find out that, that, yes, your experience will always match up to your beliefs. Your belief is creating an experience for you, your belief is creating a circumstance for you. That you don't like, oh, but you still like this. How come you are the only one only seeing the devil? The Bible says in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, look at what the, look at what Apostle Paul was saying. He said, I pray that God is source of hope. We feel you completely with joy and peace because of you trust him. Then, now, what is the result of my trust in him? Peace and hope. Peace and joy. That's it. He said, then when you now have it, then you will overflow with confident hope. That means your confidence will be built up through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we host God's presence here. Because it's not about the devil attacking you. It's about what do you believe. It's not about your circumstance. Take, so, take a goat from here to Nigeria, to America. It's still a goat. Many people have traveled out of this nation. The same thing they experienced here. They are still experiencing it where they find themselves. Why? Belief system. I told you in, during this series that take Nigerians away from Nigeria. Put them in America. Bring Americans. To Nigeria. And give us 10 years. Is it the flower they plant on the road? That people are now plucking. Because you will always reduce your
it goes soon finish. That's, that, that's why we are always rushing. You go to where hold up is, you'll be wondering what's causing the hold up. Impatience. Nobody wants to give way. You see people, they will block each other. There's a road coming here. And the person wants to come to this side. And there's no space. And he parked in front of the road. Leave there. The kingdom of God does not move by good conduct, it moves by good beliefs. Says family, by good beliefs. You will be poor for life because of your beliefs, not because God has not paid. There are people, any any situation they enter, they must beg. Go and see Nigerians abroad. And you as they enter party, they will first of all look for what to go and keep first to the house. That's what they, they were doing. You go to a party, you eat rice. Then you still collect. Some people are not eating. It doesn't bother you. You collect, take away. They do that in Europe and get home and say that they, the food they collected from parties is in their house. They throw it in the dustbin. Must you always win? Pastors, you were the one that predicted it. Say, if we cannot beat Iran, how can we beat this people? If we cannot beat Iran, Bosnia is a governor. Now, now you now say Nigeria try your two nations in one. We won them. Listen, don't, don't you think that you are double minded in this country? No, let, let's tell ourselves the truth, boy. We read the Bible. I'm a Christian. You go to, you, 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 it don't, the Bible has not changed the way you think. We are only converted. We are not convicted. Ogu worshiping style is in your, is in your DNA. It's in your DNA. You, you come to church to worship God so that God can bless you. So that he won't slap you. You know when Amadioa is angry, he, he keeps people. Amadioa keeps malice. You now believe that God himself is keeping malice with you. No. People allow their circumstances to tell them who they are. Say, I'm barren. I'm jobless. I'm broke. That's your circumstance you are speaking. I'm childless. That's your circumstance. I'm husbandless. That's your circumstance. I'm wifeless. The day Obama became president, 3,000 more than 3,000 secret service men were assigned to protect him and his family, including the dog. You know why many of you don't want to be pastors or want to increase your commitment in church? Because you are believing a lie that when you get to be a pastor, more attack. Is that not true? Come on, laugh at that lie. Which army protects his privates more than his generals.
God is saying you are a pastor, say God forbid. Because we preach that oh, ever since I became a pastor. And we use that testimony and we'll be clapping. Hoo, 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 hoo. Ever since I became a pastor. Don't be smarty devil. Devil. Fear that guy. The guy no get joy. Listen, and we'll use it as testimony. And it's your beliefs. <laughs> like I said, you're experiencing your experience. Do you know the lie you are believing is creating an experience for you? And you are saying that's your personality. The lie we are believing about our, our nation is creating an experience for us. And we call ourselves on that developed nation. We are believing a lie that if you go into politics, you'll be corrupt. And that's a lie. And God has been calling you to that sphere. You are believing a lie that you need more money. Big money to start that business. And God is saying it's a lie. You need me. The devil works with the power of agreement. When you agree with him, you're finished. You begin to walk autopilot. Let's begin to focus on our beliefs instead of our works. You know that baby? The baby believes that the mother, anytime I cry, the mother must answer. So what does the baby do when he's going? Just cries. When the mother carries the baby, the baby will just relax because it is rest. It's believed. Maturity in the kingdom is not how long you pray. Is how childlike you become. If you tell a two-year-old child that I will buy you a aeroplane tomorrow, he won't say, Daddy, how will you buy it? When? Do you have money? Okay, okay, Daddy, sit down, sit down. How will you do it? But if somebody gives you a prophetic word now and say, I see the doors opening for you tomorrow. I see men going... You, later you say, I received that thing, no. But. <laughs> the greatest revelation you need is the revelation of what who God says you are. We need a name change. In the midst of no child, God changed the name of Abraham to Abraham. He goes out to the public. He says, what's your name? Say, Abraham. Don't you think people will be laughing at him? Say, what's the meaning of Abraham? He says, father of many nations. How many children? Say, none. In Joel chapter 3, verse 10, he says, let the weak say, I am. Let the poor say, I am. Let the jobless say, I am. Let the wife, let's say I have wives. Everything are double double, not be wife. Oh. Uh -huh. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's way for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. He said, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Believers, if every, every Nigerian is saying Nigerian is bad, let's assume they are not in the kingdom. If 80 million Christians in this country begin to bless this nation, our circumstance will change. But look at how they insulted super egos on Twitter, on Facebook, on BBM. And these people are tongue speaking believers. When they rack up, open your mouth, say, even devil. Ah. The person pray like that. But after prayer, we don't even respect ourselves. Do you know some of you have your own lineup of players that should play? 
and you have not gone to a coaching course. You, are, you don't even play football. You have your own list. Okay, now Keshi, put this one first. Remove. Oh, everybody in Nigeria, we are coaches. All our players, is that they are the age? I don't want to mention it. I don't know what this table will go. Let's leave that. In four, I want to show you four core values of the renewed mind. I didn't say change what you think. I said change the way you think. I say, Pastor, you don't you won't understand. The demons for Africa are not the dream bread, that, not the job bread and tea. Have you been in their house before? Say, 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 Pastor, the demon here, the prayer they need is not this one you are praying. How do you want me to pray? Bring out your bazooka. Oh, yeah, let's start exhausting fire. To preach it to Africa is very hard. God will bless you to their head. That's only the year. If I say, God will bless you, you say, wait till this one they talk. If I can start talking to they start sleeping. Say, wake me when I finish. <laughs> But when I start to this pray, and the Lord, bing, 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 we supply all your needs, bing, 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 bing. We don't need that. Yes, say yeah, right on. Come on, come on. It's not common. It's what happens after. Am I saying you should not preach like that? No, that's not what I'm saying. The same people that we are gingering. My God, yeah, we supply, 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 supply. All I say, all, all my needs. <laughs> ah, everybody will be jumping to get to get to get to get to get to get to get. <laughs> Let us not let us have a goalless draw. Get home as you are saying, My God, just so bad. Oh, 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 oh. Then you get home. No food. Say now, wow. You forget. Uh, 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 you. The first core value is that God is good and always in a good mood. It's good. It's always in a good It's not keeping score. You must get to a time where you will know that you are fully forgiven. Jesus Christ is perfect to your Lord. What did I know? What, what I did not see Jesus do? Even if Moses and David and Paul did it, I won't do it. Dangerous prayers. Where did you see it? Did you see Jesus pray it? You go and take David's frustrated prayers. When David was going through crisis, his journal entry made their road slippy. Let them fall into the pit. Cover them. Bust their teeth. I jack their nose. Jesus came and said, love your enemies. Love your enemies. He said, if you love those that love you, what good it is? It's what, it's, it's what, it's, it's what pagans do. In Romans 8.28, he said, and we know in all things 
God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In other words, even if I'm going through crisis, I know that he's working out something. I may not know the plan, or I may not know the, this thing. And I don't have, I don't have something to pay my, my, my bills. But I know all things work it together for my God is good and his mercies endure not for a, for a season but forevermore. He's a good God. This one will make you not to backslide. I'm sick and I'm shocked. When people begin to have crisis, the first thing they cut away is kingdom activities. The day they sack you from work, that's the day you say, I'm not going to go church again. Me go church. Ruben, come first. I gave my time. I went to church three times a week. I sweep church. Even had drama. God did not see all, did not see all this one to bless me and protect my job. I, I, I not do. I see if you are quarreling with people. They cut activities. They stop church. They stop tithing. They, because you know why? They're going to protect them because God cannot bless them. They have to be the alpha and omega of their life. God bless you. What's your name? John Jire. God bless you. You are the provider. My name is not Ben Sinjiri. But I serve a God called Jehovah Jiri. He's my provider. He provides for me. He's a good God. As long as I know he's a good God, it doesn't matter what happens. He's good. He's working it out for my good. The next thing is that nothing is impossible. Nothing. Nothing. Nigeria will we walk up. You are laughing. Because ah, God can do things so, but this one. <laughs> True of us. The Bible says, if the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living inside of you, <laughs> it can raise your dormant account. It can put food in your storehouse. It can bring miraculous supply, the fish and the, and the coin in the mouth. It can restore your marriage. It can give you wife. If the same spirit, nothing is impossible to you. In Matthew 17, verse 19, verse 26, he said, Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things. No, some, some things. No, no, no. Very few things. Do you know we actually believe? You know, when things begin to happen, because revival has started in your church, we are seeing children prophesying now. Children laying hands on the sick and they are recovering. And the, 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 the presence of God was so much yesterday that people started running. They staying on this and, and, and falling. They soon start to say, Reverend, now they, mm, check those two couple. Those two couple. Then and then. They think they use something. Something there, they don't bury something. Not be, they don't bury as if God cannot do more than the devil. You see, it's our thinking. When something, when something is abnormal, it's devil. When it's normal, it's God. Because we have put God in a box. Let me hear me. There's a prophecy over this church that we have abundance. That abundance has come. So let me tell you, we, we have already started putting our acts together. This church has an external auditor. That audits our account. Because the money that will come to this place, the abundance that will come, people will be wondering whether we are criminals. The ravens have not died. Young people here will start businesses. Ideas will be gone. Your, your dreams will be released inside of you because nothing is impossible with our God. You will carry 100,000 to the bank as you are counting it, it's 200k. That's the God we serve. Jesus, you have not paid your offering, your tax. He said, Peter, take the fishing hook, go to the fish, to the river. Pick a fish and there's money inside. Go and pay. It didn't work. 
No, he did, did he walk? He was doing the work the father sent him, so provision must come. Whether nothing is impossible, like I preached on, on Wednesday on the abundance mentality. Jesus said, Feed them. 5,000 men beside women and children. He said, Feed them. They said, We don't have, so we already have five loaves and two fish. He says, Okay, let them sit down. Some of you will take your salary like this, you, you will place a cost on it. See this miserable salary. You go and meet somebody, you say, I have a need of one million. The person who goes into his house and say, I don't have one million, but I have two thousand. Take. I came to meet you. One million. You give me two K. Unknown to you, as you see that two thousand, that means that two thousand, one million minus two thousand. But you see, until God has fallen to the, even if God fought down, break we will still say he never tried. If there's something like that in Matthew 17 20 he said he replied because you have so little faith I tell you the truth if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move nothing will be impossible for you nothing if if it was only Matthew chapter 19 verse 26 I would have said okay it's with God but he now turned around and said now you, you see I don't want you to have faith as big as this house or big as the temple. I want to have faith as, as, as small as a mustard seed. Put a mustard seed here in your hand, you can't see it. Except it's come together. The faith that you used to give your life to Christ is enough. You don't look, if you look inside yourself, you will never find faith. But when you look at what he's doing, you will find faith. You think I'm looking at Super Ego to say we will win World Cup? Some of you are asking, you know when I said it, when I, when I got it, the devil was asking me one question. What was the question? Say, look at this thing, look at this thing, look at this thing. And they always be reminded, what if they eliminate themselves? <laughs> or they score own goal. Oh, you don't understand. But you see, as you see the giants, This, this, this thing should be speaking to you. The holders of the word come. <laughs> the holders. You didn't hear what I said. Look at somebody say nothing. He didn't say it very well. Say nothing. Number three, Jesus won absolute victory. Absolute victory. Please, can you show me the sin that Jesus did not die for so that we can ask him to come and die again? I say, Pastor, this one are 40 days prayer. It's 70 days all night. Am I saying all night is bad? No. We do it here. But when you do it as an orphan, as if you are begging God to help you, we do all night because that's what lovers do. We pray here. Yeah. Today is the 49th day of our prayer. Tomorrow is 50 days. We have been praying every day consecutively. Not because we want to catch devil. Because we want to declare our victory. In this place, our intercessors, they have a culture. After every prayer meeting, they must laugh. You know why you did not want to join intercessory before? Intercessors are very, very, very sober. They are carrying the body of the Lord that God did not give them. So when you see them in church, their trousers are like this. 
they are always squeezing their face. What is happening? Say, well, hey, if not be with this church, for don't go down. No. They are Alpha and Omega. He said, come and see last night. We were seeing the devil. We push the devil, the boy will push us. We push him, we push us. We push him, we push him. We <laughs> you are not fighting for victory. You are fighting for victory. The Bible says, fight the good fight. The fight has been fixed. You will win. You are experiencing your belief. The devil is too small for you. The book of Isaiah says, 